Ever wondered why cynicism seems so pervasive today? Could it be because it's embedded in our philosophical DNA? Let's go back in time, way back, to ancient Greece. This is where cynicism was born, not as a bitter outlook but as a philosophical movement. Imagine a man named Diogenes, a philosopher who decided to live in a wine barrel. Yes, you heard that right, a wine barrel. Diogenes was the father of cynic philosophy, challenging societal norms with his unconventional lifestyle. He advocated for simplicity, self-sufficiency and honesty, often to the discomfort of those around him. Diogenes believed that societal conventions were not only unnecessary, but also hindered true happiness. He lived his philosophy casting aside material possessions and societal status. His actions, often shocking to his contemporaries, were a living testament to his beliefs. So next time you encounter cynicism, remember its roots. Diogenes, the man who lived in a wine barrel, set the foundation for what we now often call cynicism. You might associate cynicism with a negative outlook on life, but is that all there is to it? Certainly not. The cynic philosophy, as espoused by Diogenes and his ilk, was far more than just a gloomy worldview. Yes, cynics did question everything, but their skepticism was rooted in a relentless pursuit of truth and authenticity, not negativity. The cynics placed great emphasis on self-sufficiency. They believed in living simply, free from material possessions and societal constraints. They viewed this as the path to true happiness and fulfillment. Diogenes often seen as the father of cynicism, famously lived in a barrel, eschewing the comfort of a conventional home. He believed that by stripping away the unnecessary trappings of society, one could achieve a state of blissful contentment. But Diogenes wasn't the only cynic philosopher who championed these ideals. There were others like Crates and Eparchia, who also embraced and propagated the cynic philosophy. Crates, a wealthy man, gave up his riches to live a life of voluntary poverty. Hipparchia, a woman in a male-dominated society, defied societal norms to become one of the few known female philosophers of antiquity. So the cynics were not just naysayers or pessimists, they were radical freethinkers, pushing the boundaries of societal norms. They questioned everything, not to spread negativity, but to seek freedom, authenticity, and truth. So cynicism isn't just about doubting everything, it's about seeking truth and authenticity. How did cynicism evolve from a radical Greek philosophy to a common attitude in today's world? Cynicism, as we know it today, has journeyed through the annals of time and morphed considerably from its ancient origins. It all began with Diogenes, the Greek philosopher, who championed a life of virtue in accord with nature. Over centuries, this radical philosophy underwent several transformations. A significant milestone in this evolution was Julian the Apostate's interpretation of cynicism, Julian, a Roman emperor in the 4th century, saw cynicism as a means to critique societal norms, rather than just an individual philosophical stance. He used the cynic's lens to expose the flaws in societal constructs, infusing a political dimension into what was once a purely personal philosophy. As cynicism progressed, it began to influence other philosophical schools, most notably Stoicism. The Stoics borrowed heavily from the Cynic's emphasis on virtue and indifference to external circumstances. However, they also introduced their own concepts, such as the idea of living according to reason, which further nuanced Cynicism's legacy. Fast forward to today, and Cynicism has become less of a philosophy and more of an attitude. It is often associated with skepticism and disillusionment towards societal institutions and norms. Yet, at its core, it still holds on to the ancient cynic's quest for truth and authenticity. Cynicism, once a radical philosophy, has now become a lens through which many view the world. So, what does cynicism mean for us in the 21st century? In our modern world, cynicism takes on a new face. It's more than just a mindset, it's a tool. A tool that, when wielded correctly, can help us cut through the clutter of misinformation and deceit. It prompts us to question the status quo, to dig deeper and to seek out authenticity and truth in a world that often prefers surface over substance. But like any tool it can also be misused. Overused cynicism can become a barrier, a wall that prevents us from trusting and connecting with others. It can make us dismissive, skeptical to a fault, hindering our ability to see the good in people and situations. So here's the takeaway. Cynicism, when used rightly, can lead us on a quest for authenticity, but it should be balanced with optimism. Cynicism, when balanced with optimism, can lead us to question, understand, and ultimately, uncover the truth.